Walter Nolan is headed to Ole Miss. The last time you and I spoke, we thought he was going to go to Ole Miss. And the former five-star defensive lineman from Texas A&M has now landed at Ole Miss. This is a really unique window in the history of college football because it hasn't ever been this way before. It probably won't be this way for much longer. And that window is the window where you could just insert yourself into bidding wars pretty much every year if you want to. And let's just, let's just not beat around the bush about the fact that that's exactly what this was. Uh, this was an NIL recruitment out of high school. This was an NIL recruitment in the portal. Ole Miss has gone all in on this class. That's why Walter Nolan is in Oxford, Mississippi. Got no problem with it because it's legal right now. Uh, but that's what happened. I don't know that that's the way it's going to work five years from now. It certainly is not the way it worked five years ago. You can come back at me in the comments if you want to and say, Josh, you're telling me players never got paid? No. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it never worked this way. And if you, if you need that explained to you, then I probably need to go watch another show. I don't, I don't think uh, that... I don't think it's, it's pretty radical to say, no, I mean, guys weren't inserting themselves into a transfer portal after playing one or two years and then having an open bidding war for their services. No, that wasn't happening five or ten years ago. Yes, you had small amounts of money being exchanged in return for your services. Yes, everyone knows that. No, there's nothing that's even remotely comparable to what's happening right now in the history of college football. So what Ole Miss has done is they have taken advantage of the current climate and what is and isn't allowed, and they've locked down the number one overall player in the portal. They've locked down the number one and number two edge players in the portal. They've locked down the number three linebacker, number three wide receiver, number five corner. They've got a ton of talent, a lot of it defensive, coming in, and they got the number one overall class. And they've got, by SEC standards, a fairly manageable schedule next year. Will it happen? Keep in mind, they just won 10 games. And that's going to be expected to be the floor for that team next year. Will it happen? There are already uh, some wild and swinging thoughts about what Ole Miss is capable of this upcoming year. But since it's not even 2024 yet, this will not be the show where I offer my 2024 opinions on Ole Miss. I will, however, apply some of this chapstick. Colin, did I show you this when you go to New York or the orthodontist? Uh, CBS in New York and the orthodontist are where they give away these mini chapsticks and they're delightful. Okay. Anyway, Damani Jackson, what's the latest here? So Damani Jackson's a former five-star corner. Of course, he played defense at USC. So no one has any clue how good he actually is. I mean, Kirby just took the DB coach from USC. So just because you have that USC defense stink on you doesn't mean that the best minds in college football couldn't still see something. In you, And the reason I mention that is because, as you know, Damani Jackson in Los Angeles, California, where he has thus far played his college football, well, Alabama and Michigan happened to be out there today practicing for the Rose Bowl. Damani Jackson showed up to Alabama's practice today, was seen talking to Nick Saban, and Alabama's thought to be one of the contenders for his services. Now, I will tell you, both of those programs, Bama and Michigan, if those are the two it's down to, those programs are kind of cherry-picking the portal a little bit. Neither one of them is engaging in the bidding war structure that is the portal right now. N neither is Georgia to a large extent. Uh, neither is Ohio State. They're just not doing it. Told you it was going to work that way two years ago. There was a fear that the big teams were just going to outspend everyone. Nope, not the way it's happening. That they don't need to do it. It's not the way it's happening. Uh, but Damani Jackson is in a situation where he has underachieved from a production standpoint. He has NFL talent. He does not have NFL production. And you got to get serious at this point in your career. And you got to go to the place that can best prepare you. And whether it is Alabama or Michigan, I don't care if he goes to either one. Those are places uniquely equipped, if he's got it on his side, to much better prepare him for a future on Sundays than where he has been. Um, number 26 overall player right now in the portal. I, I've, I've heard Alabama rumblings. I've heard Michigan rumblings. We'll see where that goes. I think, you know, you don't show up to Bama's practice today invited unless there's some smoke there. Uh, Bama did get LT Overton. So that's the other defensive lineman or defensive tackle rather 
which counts, from Texas A&M. Uh, he was the number two overall D lineman in the portal, right behind Walter Nolan. 6'5", 265. Some of the feedback we got suggests you probably see some size put on him, and he's probably an immediate contributor next year. Or, or they don't take you if they don't think you're going to be there, at least. So he's... I don't know. I, I, I look at a lot of these A&M guys. I look at that 2022 class in general. That's worth doing a whole segment on in and of itself one day. But, I mean, a lot of these guys are going to be difference makers. Evan Stewart's in the portal. We're not even talking about him tonight. He's in the portal, the wide receiver. <clears throat> He's going to be a difference maker somewhere. Uh, but LT Overton is, is already locked into Alabama. We've got him at 6'5", 280. He probably doesn't weigh that much right now. Uh, that's probably where Bama's going to want him in order for him to do what they'll want him to do. Georgia has made a couple of moves here. Uh, one of them was badly needed. Georgia had to have a running back. They went and got Trevor Etienne from Florida, which is not a move that I love at all. It's a good move for Georgia. I just hate the idea that you could ever go from Florida to Georgia or vice versa. That's the world we live in. I, I don't have to like it. I respect rivalries. I don't like anyone having played both sides of them. And when I'm college football commissioner... We may very well outlaw that. We'll see. Time will tell. 5.7 yards per carry last year. He had 21 receptions, too. I think Georgia could use him out of the backfield in the passing game a lot more than Florida did. Number one overall running back available in the portal. Again, a badly needed pickup for Georgia here. But they also got Colby Young. This one kind of flew under the radar. He was the number six wide receiver. He's big body, 6'5", 215 out of Miami. Had 47 receptions this year, 560 yards, five touchdowns. So two pickups at positions of need for Georgia. We'll see if they're done. Who knows? We'll see. Um, also, Malik Murphy, I mean, this one's a little old. I just haven't been able to talk to you about it. Malik Murphy went to Duke. Remember at Texas, a couple of games this year he had to start, and he didn't light the world on fire. He was turnover prone. So maybe still a little bit of a project as a player. 6'5", 238, he's a redshirt freshman. Um, there was a big market for him after spring, honestly. I mean, he shined in their spring game. A lot of folks need quarterbacks. He stayed put. And uh, that was all illegal, by the way. He never entered the portal, yet there was a market for him. You do the math on that. But we're not here to uh, legislate morality in the transfer portal. Far be it for us to do that. No. What we are going to do is hat tip Manny Diaz, new head coach at Duke, for getting... Steve Sarkeesian's backup quarterback. Uh, we are going to eternally shame the powers that be in college football for even making this have to happen this time of year, but this is not going to be another fix the college football calendar segment. Well, Riley Leonard's out. Riley Leonard's out, and so they had to have this. And I don't Look, I don't know that I'm going to expect Malik Murphy to just light the world on fire right out of the gate this year. Okay, This is not a guy who has reached his potential as a quarterback and, and a multi-year starter, and you're getting a plug-and-play. He's not an automatic plug-and-play. He'll be their starter, but it's not a plug-and-play in the sense that you would uh, classically define that. So that's what's going on in the portal right now. <laughs> 